One of the most challenging areas of the world for spreading the gospel is what we call the 1040 window. This window is the rectangular area of North Africa, the Middle East, and Asia, approximately between 10 degrees north and 40 degrees north latitude. This window includes the majority of the world's Muslims, Hindus, and Buddhists. Containing approximately 5.3 billion individuals residing in almost 9,000 distinct people groups, with over 6,000 of these people groups representing over 3 billion people considered unreached. In addition, the top 50 least evangelized megacities are all in the 1040 window, and of the poorest of the poor, more than 8 out of 10 live in the 1040 window. Our special guest today is Darren, serving in the 1040 window. Please share with us some of the major challenges of getting the gospel to this part of the world. War is a major problem. Um, radicalism and person's family of origin has more to do with anything. Once I'm born into something, it's hard for me to move. You know, it's hard for most of us to change our major way of thinking. And that's the, the biggest, at the core of it, it would be the family that is probably the biggest challenge in our part of the world. What are some ways that people can help in this region of the world? Because when I look at the problem, I say, there's a need and we have people. What can we do to help? I would say number one, prayer. Prayer makes all the difference in the world. And I know someone from here in the U.S. who just simply began praying for one city that he knew was not one Christian, let alone anyone else, uh, let alone Adventist in, in that context. He began praying and he actually found a way to show up in that city and he spent three days walking and it was amazing all of the divine appointments that he had in that time. So prayer is number one. Two is find a way to get there, maybe through your business. Hire people from there that you can start in influencing. You know, this is a day of remote working, hiring people from countries in the 1040 window, and just beginning to dialogue with them and, and lead them closer. Those are just simple things. We have a challenge in our part of the world that every day at 10.02 in the morning that we will pray that God will give us laborers and that those laborers, uh, God has his permission to begin with us. Thank you for sharing those things of something we can do. I know that not having enough workers and really not having sufficient budgetary resources are another part of the challenge there. What would you say, what's the strategy that we might be able to use going forward, even knowing that we have limited resources? Yeah. Um, you and I were talking earlier, the, the cost of, of bringing someone to some of these parts of the world is highly expensive. But we find that people from all over the world are coming to get employment there. Mm -hmm. So there is an opportunity for doctors and nurses and engineers and people in oil and those kind of things can, can all be looking for ways to be there. Um, often dignitaries, uh, if someone has experience in those type of areas, they can look online and search um, through job placement uh, type of opportunities to be able to find ways to work in the unentered areas of the world. So what I hear you saying is that primarily these individuals need to go self-funded to a degree find employment where they can be an influence in that region yeah. and uh, make friends with people and help to acquaint them with the gospel. Darren, what I want to do is give you an opportunity to share some testimonies. Tell us about some of the stories there. I was in a city and I went to um, a mall 
Um, my wife was away traveling and I needed to get a hook, you know, the honeydew list had <laughs> right. been created and I needed a hook to hang something on in the house. And so I was there looking up and down, couldn't find exactly. And then I noticed suddenly that there was a little kid going behind me between a mom and a dad. And uh, they kept talking with one another in their local language. And then I heard them say in English, is this the guy? So I turned to them and I said, well, you speak English. Yes, we're wondering if you're the one. And they began discussing back and forth with me. They had been online on a social media platform with a minister of another faith, had been dialoguing with him because both of them several months before had had a dream, the same dream, of a big white being with nail scars or scars in wow. the hands. They were had both received this dream within moments of each other, it woke up and said, what does this mean? And so they had put it out on a social media, anonymous social media chat, and someone had answered who had led them to who that being was. And then they had driven for more than 20 hours, crossed a number of different countries and were at my place where I was shopping on that day. And they thought that I was the person who they'd been chatting with. And I was the one who happened to be right there. And so for the next hour and a half, I had the opportunity to talk much deeper and answer many of their questions. A woman who was, you know, fully this way, they had driven with seven cars and a caravan across the country and then had made an excuse for themselves to go shopping. And that's where I was, a divine appointment. Wow. God is doing those kind of things. And I hear it so often, dreams and visions that now probably would say about 30% will soon get into the fact of a spiritual dream that has significance in their life. So I use that as a tool. Wow. Amen. Friends, the work of getting the gospel to this area of the world is humanly impossible. But that does not relieve us of the responsibility to pray and work unitedly. If you know what God wants you to do, then you cannot fail. However, succeeding in raising a ministry demands knowledge and talent supplemented by godly counsel based on practical experience. Start Right will provide the impetus needed to make an informed start. Therefore, be diligent to present yourself approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed. You cannot but succeed. Download it now. Today's story comes from the Hartgood Foundation in Norway. Norway's population is approximately 6 million, with one Seventh-day Adventist for every 1,300 people. Religion in Norway is dominated by Lutheran Christianity, a town of silver mines, waterfalls, and a favorite ski slope. Kongsberg, Norway is also home to the Hartgood Foundation, a ministry founded in 1978. Over the years, the ministry has had a large impact through its various enterprises, including a bakery, farm, health food store, restaurant, the European Bible School, and its lifestyle center. In 1980, the pioneering team established Fredheim Lifestyle Center. At Fredheim, or Home of Peace, many find relief for their physical ailments, gain renewed courage, and they experience a fresh trust in God as they meet Jesus through the care and compassion of the staff. Now, let's watch what they have to share. Well, before I came here, I was at a disciple training school in Australia called Arise. 
I have been here at Fredheim Lifestyle Center now for two and a half years, but it all actually started in Australia. And I actually didn't want to work here at all. So many things happened, but I, uh, through fasting and prayer really, I ended up here at Fredheim. And um, he reminded me of an ancestry prayer, which I had almost forgotten. I chose myself or that I wanted to do just to make God happy. It was God yeah, leading me here. Well, when I first came here, I had said yes to six months of work. And in the beginning, uh, they put me to do all the different things that the nurses or the people that work with the guests do. So I got a lot of responsibility and trust right from the beginning. And so I did many things that I was kind of uncomfortable doing naturally. So I was having uh, lectures and devotions and I had cooking demos, uh, which I kind of like, but I wasn't comfortable really standing in front of people, uh, but I kind of grew and got comfortable uh, after a short amount of time really. Um, and so I really liked it. And so I ended up finding out that six months was not enough at all. I wanted to work here longer. Well, so now it's two and a half years ago since I first came here. And um, the, the work here has, has really changed me in ways that, um, in my own uh, habits, because that's what we teach the guests. When I work with the guests in so many different ways, uh, because I do, yeah, a lot of variety in my work during one day. And I have really felt the need for help from God in so many situations. So um, it has helped me to, to pray more and feel the, um, yeah, the need for God, for His help, because I can't do it on my own. And so, um, yeah, that has really um, made me grow spiritually. All the, the uh, colleagues that I have and the environment that I work in, it's such a blessing. We pray together before we start work and uh, we have prayer meetings and uh, yeah, all these gatherings where we uh, can lift each other up and motivate each other. So Fredheim is actually not only a ministry for the local people or Norwegians. It's actually like a mission field for people from all over the world that can come here and work. And I have seen so many people's lives changed for the better by working here, even if it's with guests or in the kitchen or with massages or maintenance, because the environment is you know, such a blessing and God is doing uh, lots of things in our lives for the better. In Norway, like in the Mena region, there is much work to do. They're doing wonderful work and impacting many lives, but they need more volunteers and support. In Matthew 9, verses 37 and 38, we read, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth labors into his harvest. Friends, we're inviting you to pray. We're inviting you to go. And if you cannot go, you can support others financially. Let's fulfill God's mission and light the world together.